Hello Power BI enthusiasts and welcome to another exciting tutorial where we will delve into the world of data visualization with a fantastic custom visual developed by PowerVis, the Ridgeline plot. If you are looking to bring your Power BI reports to life and unveil patterns, you're in the right place. The PowerVis Ridgeline plot is not your average chart. It's a powerful tool that allows you to visualize the distribution of numeric variables across multiple categories along a continuous axis. In this walkthrough, we'll explore the advanced customization options, some of the pre-designed features and interactivity that sets this visual apart. Before I jump in and show you how to download this visual from the app source and get started, let me show you some of the cool examples that we have created using the PowerWiz Ridgeline plot which will help you dissect trends and unveil patterns. So using this visual, I'm trying to analyze the shift in weather patterns and I have the data here for over 25 years and with the help of the ridge line chart, I'm very clearly able to see the pattern that has been changing from the negative temperature to the positive temperature, which means that it's getting hotter as the years pass by. So let's take a look at the next example that I have here. I have the data here for 15 states of the unemployment rates and I'm trying to analyze the pattern in which months do I have the highest rate of unemployment. So I can very clearly see that between April to June is when all of the states here go through the highest unemployment rate. And these are also marked here by these reference lines which help you understand the highest peak points in your data set. Here is another visual to show you the different display styles this particular visual offers. We have used the different styles here, we have used the patterns, we have used an image to fill a particular area. So let me show you how to download this visual from the app source. Under build a visual tab, click on these ellipses and choose get more visuals. On the app source over here, type in ridge line. So this is the ridge line plot by PowerVis. All you have to do is click on this add button here. The visual will get added to your Power BI report. Now that the visual has been imported, let's click on OK. And this is the visual that we need to click on here and add this to our Power BI report. So let's start building this visual now. I have a sample data set over here. I have temperature bins. I have my temperature, which is going to be my measure. I'm going to right click and select count here. And then I have year. I'm going to add that to the Y axis. And now I have my visual created and I can see that I have my years here on the Y axis and my temperature here from negative six to positive four on the X axis. So let's jump in into the advanced settings to see what are the options that are available here for us to customize and build this visual so that we can unveil patterns using this particular visual. So let's go to the first option here, which is the ridge line. Under ridge line, we have different line styles to choose from. By default, the line style here is natural. You can also choose the line type of linear and step. Let me quickly apply this and show you how the linear style appears. And let's also go back here. There's also a step line style here you can click on apply you see that the line style has now changed to step so let's go back to the ridge line the next option here is to control the opacity of the fill area within the visual i can increase this to let's say about 80 percent and click on apply and now the fill area is less transparent. And the next option here is to choose the color palette. By default, the single color palette is applied. You can choose to apply the Power BI theme that you have in your Power BI report. When I click on apply, the Power BI theme gets applied to the visual. You can also choose the different options that are available. Like for example, I have the category option here. You can choose a particular color to assign it to a particular category. So the next option under the area color palette here is the gradient option where you can choose to apply the gradient either by x-axis or by the category. So let's choose a minimum color here. Let me go ahead with the red or the orangish color and click on apply. And let's choose the maximum color here as blue. Let me click on apply and then click on apply. And you can see that we're now indicating the colder temperatures here. And as it gets hotter, the color here turns towards orange. You can also enable mid color here and you can choose the color of your choice. When you click on apply, click on apply again, the mid color here turns yellow. The next option under the area color palette here is the sequential option where you get to choose the number of classes. You can also apply the 
sequential color either by x-axis or by category. There are various color palettes here to choose from. Let's apply this green color here and click on apply. And you can see that we have now applied the sequential color palette to our visual. The next option here is the diverging color. We have various palettes under the diverging option as well. Let's say for example, we can choose orange to purple. There are various options here again to choose from. Let's go ahead with orange to purple and click on apply here. And now we have applied the diverging color palette to our visual. The last option here is the qualitative option where you get to choose the number of classes again and there are different options here to choose from. Let's apply the medium contrast here. So this is how it looks like when you apply the qualitative color palette. The next option here is stroke and by default the stroke is enabled for the visual. When I turn this off and click on apply you no longer can see the stroke. Let's go back to stroke here. There are options here for you to also control the width of the stroke. For example if you want to increase the size of the stroke you can do that and when you click on apply the stroke size increases. There are also different styles that are available. You have dashed, you have dotted. When I click on dashed here and click on apply you can see that the stroke has now changed. The last option here is the auto color option which is turned on by default. When I turn this off I'll be able to apply a particular palette to the stroke. For example let's say I want to apply this by category and now I can change the color here for the 1992 category. I can choose a red color here click on apply click on apply again and you can see that I have changed the color of the stroke for the 1992 category. Within the stroke you also have an option to enable markers. By default they are turned off. You can turn them on by toggling this button here. There are different marker types that are available. You have circle, square, triangle, reverse triangle etc. Let's choose circle and let's take a look at the next option here which is the position. You have an option to apply markers to all the data points that are available on your visual. For example, when I select all and click on apply, I have the marker points added to all of the data points that I have on my X axis. So I can choose to either show them on all the positions or I can only choose to display them at the max position. When I click on apply, you can see that the maximum number is highlighted through the marker. And then you also have an option here to display markers for both the positions which is min as well as max and let me increase the size a bit to about 18 pixels here and click on apply. You can see that we have now applied the markers to min as well as the max position in this visual. Now in this visual on the y axis I have 28 years of data and it is getting little difficult for me to scroll down and understand what the pattern looks like. So this is where our next feature comes into play which is the scale option. There are two different options under the scale. One is the overlap and the second is the minimum height. So let's change the overlap here. Right now it's set at 1. Let me move this to about 4 and click on apply to see what difference does this make to the visual. And as you can see over here, the overlapping here has been increased in all of these years that you see. And based on your preference, you can change the overlap. Now that I have increased the overlap in this visual, I have the scroll bar enabled. And if you have to take a look at all the years present in the visual, you will have to scroll down and take a look. Now if you don't want to do that, this is where the next option within the scale feature comes into the play wherein we can adjust the minimum height of the line and the area chart that you see here. So I can reduce the minimum height here let's say to about 20 and then click on apply and now you can see that we have reduced the height of the line and the area chart or you can call that as a mountain as well. We have reduced the size of that mountain here so that you'll be able to now see all the ears within this particular visual without you having to scroll up and down. And now let's say if you think that the overlap is little too much you can always go back to the scale and change the overlap here let's say to about 2 and click on apply and now the overlap has been reduced. This can be adjusted based on your requirements and your preferences. Now let's take a look at the next feature here which is ranking. You can enable ranking here and you can choose the measure here based on which you want to rank. In this case it's count of temperature. I have the filter options here which is top end and bottom end. I, let's say for example I want to identify my top end values. I can enter the count as 5 and click on apply. I now have my top 5 years appearing on my visual. Let me just go back to ranking. There's also an option here where I can 
check this box and say consider peaks only. Right now, if you look at this visual, I have the top five years, 1992, 93, 94, 95 and 96. When I check this box and click on apply, you will see that it is now considering the peaks of every single year and returning that 1993, 5, 1998, 2001 and 2018. These are the top five years when the peaks were much higher. Likewise, I have an option here to choose the bottom end categories. I can choose to display the bottom five categories over here. And the next option here is to show remaining as other. So when I toggle this option here, there are two different methods that you can choose from either sum or by average. Let's go ahead with sum and click on apply. And now what happens is that the rest of the categories here are grouped as others while my top five categories are being displayed over here. Now let's take a look at the next option that is available here which is sorting. There are two different options here the x axis and the y axis. Let's say for example you want to sort your y axis you can enable this here and choose the aggregator how you would like to sort your x axis. For example I want to sort this by highest value I can do that and I can choose a field here which is let's say for example the count of temperature and sort this by descending and click on apply and now I have my axis sorted by the count of temperature in the descending order. The next option here is the grid lines. By default the grid lines are enabled on the x axis as well as on the y axis. You can choose to disable them if you would like so that you don't see any grid lines here or if you want to enable them you can do that and choose the different styles that are available here like solid, dashed, long dashed, two dashed etc. And then you can also control the width of those grid lines and also change the color. For example if you want to have this yellow color you can do that when you click on apply here you see that the grid lines are now visible with the yellow color and they are slightly thicker than they used to be earlier. The next option here is the mode line. So let me enable this and show you what happens and let me just click on apply. You can see that the highest value in every category has been highlighted here with this mode line. Let me go to ranking here, let enable this and let me show you the top six over here so that it's clearly visible. And when I go back to mode line here, there are different line styles that are available. There is dash, there is dotted here and you can also control the line width of these lines here. And the next option here is the label option where you can choose to display the label. You will also be able to change the background color if you would like. For example, if you want this blue color, you can do that and you can click on apply. You can change the background color and let's go back to mode line. You can also change the font size, the font family, the styling of the font, the border style. You can enable the border here and when you click on apply, you get a little border around the label. The next option here is the reference lines. I'll be able to add reference lines here either by X axis or the Y axis. For example, I want to add a reference line whenever the value here is more than two. I can choose the different line options that are available here. The solid line, the dashed line or the dotted line. Let's go ahead with the dashed line here. I can also choose to increase the width of the line and also change the line color. I want to go ahead with the red color here and let me scroll down. There are label options that are available as well. Let's say if I want to have some label mentioned, for example, I can say it's getting hotter and I can change the background color of that label. Let's go ahead with red and click on apply. I can have the text color in white. I also have an option here to choose the font family, the text size, the styling the alignment and also the position. For now, let me just click on add and click on apply. You can see that I've now added a reference line along with the label to indicate that it's getting hotter anything beyond this line. So let's go back to reference lines. I can click on this edit icon over here to edit the line. I'll now be able to also control the alignment of this particular label. I can, let's say for example, if I want to display it on the top, I can do that. I can also choose the position whether I want to display on the left or on the right. Let's choose right here and I can also choose to enable the border and click on update and then select apply. You can now see that we have now applied the label here on the top right section of the reference line. Now let's take a look at the next option here which is fill pattern. I can enable the fill pattern here and there are different options here like I can apply the fill pattern either by the count of temperature that is the measure that we have or by the category. For example, I want to change the fill pattern of the 1995 year. I can do that here. I can choose for example, I want to have diamonds here and then click on apply. I can now apply the diamond fill pattern to the year 1995 category. Likewise, you also have an option to upload a custom image, but make sure that the custom image is of the size 32 by 32 pixels only. 
Now let's take a look at the next option here which is tooltip. When you hover over any of the data points here, the tooltip displays the year, the x-axis information, the y-axis information and also the values or the measure that you have added to that particular visual. And if you want to display more information in this tooltip, you can do that by going to the tooltip option here and you can choose to display the highest value, the lowest value, the mean value and also the median value. For example, let's check this box here to display the highest value and the mean value and when I click on apply and go back to the visual here and hover over any of the data point I'll now be able to see what's the highest temperature for that particular category and what's the average count of temperature for that particular category. Let's head to the next section here which is the theme. Now you might have spent a lot of time in formatting this visual according to your choice and your preferences in terms of choosing the colors, in terms of adding markers, sorting, scale, etc. Now all of that here can be saved as a theme so that it can be reapplied to any new visual that you add in this Power BI report or any other Power BI report. So all you have to do is once you have finalized your formatting options, you can click on this download icon over here and then click on this code, copy the code here. Let's click on done here. Let's open notepad here. Let's paste the code that you have copied from the theme section. Let's go to file, click on save as. Locate the folder where you want to save this file and give it a name. I'm gonna call this as Ridgeline Custom Theme. And also don't forget to enter the file type. In this case, it has to be JSON. So I'm gonna type in dot and followed by JSON, J-S-O-N, and then click on save. Once this is saved, I'm gonna close this and let's head over to the report here. I'm gonna add a new tab and let's add the Ridgeline visual here. I've quickly created a new visual over here. I have the area temperature and the temperature count. And if I have to apply the same theme to this visual as well, all I have to do is head over to the advanced settings, go to the theme section here, click on upload, locate the file where you have saved. I'm gonna double click on this Ridgeline custom theme.json. Make sure the file name here is .json or the file extension here is .json. I'm going to double click on this and then click on apply. Once you click on apply, the entire theme gets copied to this visual and thereby saving a lot of time which you would have spent in customizing this visual. And the last option that we have in this visual is the show condition. This option basically allows you to control whether you want to display the visual or not based on a certain condition. For example, let's say you have this visual now which is of different areas. If I bring in the area column that I have in my table here, let me change this to a slicer. Now unless you select any value from this slicer, you should not be displaying the visual because it displays a lot of information here. So let's quickly do that. So let me create a new measure here and I'm going to call this as show ridge line is equals to I'm going to use an if statement here to check if my column is filtered or not. The column here is the area column. I'm going to close the bracket here followed by a comma and if this is filtered then return one else return a zero. I'm going to close the bracket and confirm. The show condition basically works on a boolean value. I'm going to select the visual here, bring in the show condition here into the show section and then go back to my setting, go to show condition. By default now it's enabled since we have added a value here and I can change the custom message as well. I can choose the font family, styling, text size, color, etc. and then click on apply. Let's select an area from this slicer. When I choose the area here, I'll now be able to display the visual. If I don't select any of the area here, I'll not be able to display the visual. I'll be able to display the custom message that we have entered in the visual. We also have a grid view option on the visual. You can locate this grid view icon here. When you click on this, you'll be able to see the data in a tabular format. You can scroll towards the right and take a look at the entire data that we have added to this particular visual. You also have the filter option here. You can filter by any of the data fields that we have added to our visual. You can choose what you want to display in this particular grid. You also have the pivot option in here in case you want to add or remove some of the fields. You can do that right from this visual. Now let's head over to the format section of this visual wherein you also get some options here to control some of the key things like the legend, the number formatting, etc. You also have an option here to either turn on or turn off the legend here. When you have added multiple measures to your visual, you'll be able to control the legend. You can either turn them off or turn them on 
you can also control the position of the legend likewise you can also control the max length the font etc and if you scroll down here you also have the option to control the number formatting when you hover over the visual you get to see the numbers here in the tooltip you can control the decimal places in this case the decimal places are two let me move that to zero here and enter and when i go back to my tooltip here you can see that i no longer see the decimal values you also have various options where you can customize for example you can change the decimal separator you can change the thousand separator you can choose the decimal places the display units here whether you want to display the units here by auto none thousands or millions or in billions etc you also have the prefix option this really helps especially when you have currencies that you are dealing with and then you also have an option here to add suffix to your values and there you have it, the PowerWiz Ridgeline Plot, a game changer in the world of Power BI visualizations. The Ridgeline Plot offers a variety of curvature styles to suit your design preferences, with the ability to enhance your visuals using a plethora of color options, advanced scaling controls, mode lines, peak points, reference lines, and highlighting ranges with fill patterns for that extra flair and the convenience of saving your design with themes. The Ridgeline Plot is a powerhouse. I hope you found this tutorial insightful and that you're eager to incorporate the Ridgeline plot in your Power BI reports. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more such content. Until then, happy visualizing.